Hello, this is Jake B-Man with Golden Fox Farms. Today, we're going to talk about some headache hives. In particular, these are hives with freestyle comb built in them. In general, this occurs when we give bees space that isn't controlled by the equipment, like frames with foundation. In the two tall hives in this apiary, both have different versions of the same problem. The bees built into the feeder boxes. Uh, this box on the right was missing several of the frames in the top super, so the bees actually built from the lower super's top frames up into this space. We do have some frames in the box below. Uh, we're going to have to drive the bees off the top. This one over here has a whole different problem and different method. This one, the bees built the comb from the top down, uh, from the under cover down, or rather telescope lid, because there probably isn't an inner cover. So it's a different method to deal with that one altogether. In both cases, we want to depopulate the areas with freestyle comb. In the hive to the right, where they built from the bottom up, that appears to all be honey on top. So we can take this off and harvest it. Uh, the way we will do this is by pushing the bees down from above because we can start above them. And we'll use a fume board for this. We put the fume board on top, drives the bees down and below where we need to work, and then we can harvest without crushing a bunch of bees and angering a bunch of bees. For the hive where the bees built from the top down, the process is going to be much slower. There is some brood that we saw in that comb. Uh, we need to make sure the queen is not up in here, and we'll do that by inspecting and just assuming the queen's down below if we find brood down below, just because that top area is so relatively small. But if we just take that off, uh, we're going to have brood in there. It's kind of a mess. It's kind of a hassle. So what we can do is we can place a queen excluder between this and the rest of the hive, turning this into a honey-only super. That way, in 24 days, when she comes back, all the brood that was in here will have been emerged. So she can cull that box and the comb and whatever else is in it without destroying brood. And equally, if there's no brood in that area, it'll be largely depopulated to begin with. So what we'll do with the one on the right is use a fume board. The fume board is a piece of felt with a metal top and this absorbs solar radiation. I'm going to spray in here some Be Quick. Uh, there's a lot of comparable uh, products. This one is Be Quick. Uh, but there's other honey robbing type products and they all do the same thing to some extent. They make an obnoxious smell that pushes the bees down. Now these ones use solar radiation to heat those lids, but it's so overcast we're going to have to break out my bottle of sunshine and put a little heat into this lid to start that whole fume generation process to push these bees down. We'll let that work and start with this one. With this one, all the bees are in this top stuff here. So I can take this off as an assembly and put it on the ground. And that way I can get into these other boxes and see what's going on. Because I think down here there's probably nothing going on. There's no bees coming from the entrance. They're all at the top. Now we've smoked this already. But because my head is now in the flight path, it looks a little busy. Uh, but it looks a little more active than it really is. But we'll get this top box broken free and set off to the side. It's been a while since somebody's been in here because this is glued together. I'm not going to trust the handles on this thing because they're just stapled in. With little staples, so I'm just going to move it from the box itself and put this off to the side. Now we can actually get into the hive. Now there's some other issues. There's This is an 8 frames in a 10 frame box. You can do that, but you got to make sure they're evenly spaced. And these ones aren't evenly spaced. But they haven't really built bridge comb in here yet. So let's 
pull a frame out and see what's going on. Uh, when they're loose like this, I don't slide them left and right first. I just go straight up with them. Because when we move them side to side, they tend to just shove propolis around. So I'll pull this out nice and slow, making sure we don't scrub anything. And what we're wondering is where the queen is, because what we're going to do is put a queen excluder between that top box and the rest of the hive. But there's no brood on that center one, so if there's not brood, there's probably no brood in that box. So let's go down and see if we find brood further down. Now we have a big cloud of bees forming near my head. That, again, that's where their entrance was. They're, they're looking for the entrance that was here, so they're all coming back to where the entrance was. That's what's going on. They're, they're not aggressive. They're just trying to get back inside. And they're just a little corn-fused. This one has some capped brood in it. This one's got nine frames. Again, you can run nine frames in a ten-frame box. That's fine, just make sure they're evenly spaced. And this one has brood in it. And my gamble is, since we have brood down here, there's probably a brood underneath this as well. Which means the queen is down here, but odds are they don't go all the way to the bottom. It's a little spotty, but they're there. Uh, this is an old yellow plastic foundation. A lot of these older or cheaper plastics, the bees just don't care for it. And they end up building this freestyle comb off the sides of it. The only way to fix it is to bury it in the wax. Usually, even the junkiest plastic they'll accept if you bury it in enough wax. Uh, this one's got a good enough brood pattern on it. Uh, so we definitely have a queen. She's a decent layer. And we haven't seen eggs. But, if there's brood down here, odds are the queen's down here and not in that top box. That top super we pulled off. So let's see if they're using the boxes further down. That does have some weight to it. I can see more cat brood here. I don't really feel the need to pull a frame out. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, beetle trap out so we don't splash it when we move these hives around. Now this one still has brood, so they're all the way down. The brood is all the way down into this third box. Let's see if they're in the bottom one. They might surprise me and have bees going all the way down. If not, we can get that box out of here. Uh, there's bees, and we got shallow frames in a medium box, shallow frame in a medium box. So you get that bird comb built off their tails. Uh, you'll get some drone combs in those spots because they can freestyle build. But they are using this for brood still. So let's pull a frame out from that middle bottom box and see if they're going all the way down. So they're all the way down here. So we'll leave them all the boxes they had. They were just using that top print just because they like it so much. Surprise, surprise. Nothing down here worth harvesting. Uh, so we'll just get this hive put back together uh, just to find the frames as we go. We can't really consolidate this hive, make it physically smaller, without doing a frame-by-frame -frame consolidation, because they're using each box. And I don't want to invest that much time in this hive right now. So we'll just get this thing put back together and get our queen excluder installed to isolate that top box. <laughs> When I do eight frames, one of the things that's easy for me to remember is I can center them on the front. If you're doing nine frames, you have a frame that actually gets centered here. With that lid with the comb built on it, what we'll do is we'll put a queen excluder here, put that box back on top. Since we're pretty sure that queen's down below, if we wait 24 days, we know all the brood, if there is brood up here, will be emerged, and you can harvest this at free will. You can just shake the bees out go and cut and crush afterwards. That's it. Okay, and so now we know. In 24 days you can come back and get rid of that.
Okay. Now let's go back to this first one. Okay. What this does is if it got warm enough and breathed enough, it pushes all the bees off. If you look down in there, most of the bees are no longer up there. They've descended, they've moved away. So what we're gonna do is we'll stop filming now. Okay. Well, I, I say that. Let me crack this box and make sure this isn't full of brood. Because if it's full of brood, we don't want to take this away and destroy it. Definitely got queen cups. These are uh, shallows in a medium box. Yeah. Again, and definitely a bunch of queen cups. I believe, you now I say that the light's not very good right now. I'll slide these back a little more and lay it down. That's all honey. Yeah. We can just take this with us. Well, I say that this is brood here. This one has take brood. Take that one off, yeah. That one has brood. Now this one's entombed by the honey that's on top of it. But what I'm thinking is let's take this into the shop. Okay. Just knock out that top section, get that cleared out, and then we can just put this back on the hive. Okay. So we've carried the box with the comb built on top of the frames into a garage, so if it gets hairy, we can close it mm -hmm. uh, with the robbing. I'm gonna start disassembling this stuff to get the comb out. The comb is bridged up here. This is a feeder box, isn't it? Feeder box with mm -hmm. the pull-out shelf, which had a short life. Yeah. <laughs> in this world okay mm -hmm. this frame on the outer edge is unimpacted i can just pull that frame out okay which is what i will do there's not that many bees in here okay if we didn't have this high stuff i'd actually flip the box upside down okay that way we can remove the box and leave the frames in place but since it has this high stuff we would crush doing that i'm first going to just manually remove all the high stuff okay. and most of this is either dry or got open nectar in it that you will be able to crush and you can bottle it just fine assuming it's dry enough. I'm going to try to keep this frame and the other frame as not screwed up as I can so they're easily reused but that might not really be a happen. Thing. And again most of the bees are out of here so I'm just not that worried about catching the few sprays I will catch doing this. We're killing far fewer bees doing it this way than if we're trying to do this on top of the hive. I'm going to try to also keep the mountains of honey I'm getting going everywhere. It's okay, we can clean that up. Okay. Alright. So you would extract it at this point? I would crush it and Just worry about drying it afterwards. Okay. I mean, your options are either harvest it and dry it or let the bees have it mm -hmm. and it's going to set off all sorts of robbing if you just left this yeah. out to the bees yep oh. <laughs> yeah this is what i've dealt with the last couple of years because i've gotten in a hurry i've had too many hives yeah i have the, one of the best ways you can screw yourself in beekeeping is not having enough equipment when you need it. Mm -hmm. And this is it. This is what happens. Yep. Because all of this could be a new super drawn that mm -hmm. you can use for the rest of your beekeeping career. Instead, it's going into the tote for you to have to smash it down later. So absolutely stockpile equipment. Bees want to triple themselves every year. That's what I tell people. Mm -hmm. I think it's true. Bees will triple themselves, given the opportunity. Yeah. And you have to decide if you're going to let them swarm or try to hold on to them. If you're going to try to hold on to them, how are you going to hold on to them? Because it turns into a boatload of equipment pretty dang fast. It does. Once we removed all the stray comb, we were able to return that super to its hive. We would omit putting the feeder back on top, it was unnecessary, and closed it all back up. The top of this hive does not have an entrance, which is good, because all that honey that's still loose in there is going to be putting out that smell and attracting robber bees. So you can't have a robbing issue when you mess with these freestyle comb hives. 
Uh, that said, again, no entrance in the top box. And this hive actually has a robbing screen on it already. Uh, the bees that are in this box will move back up into that top box, and they'll remove all that loose odiferous honey that we left in there, and everything will go back to normal. And it'll be a regular hive to inspect going forward. With that, I hope we have given you the tools to handle these situations as they arise. If you enjoy my content, please hit the like and subscribe. That is how the algorithms rate channels for recommendations. And I will say good luck and happy beaking.